Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug-and-play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass-through component in case you experience a failure on board here, it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty. So we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. All right, for this install, we've got ourselves a bone stock Kawasaki Ninja 400. If you've already picked up one of our TST Industries integrated taillights, you may know that they are programmable and all the functions that exist on the brake light modulator are already built into the taillight. So installing a brake light modulator will be redundant for you. You may not want that. If you're in the market for an integrated taillight, this is a great unit. It's restyled, radically different optics. It has integrated signals in it and all of the functions for the brake light modulator that you will find already on board here. If you have a stock light or some other company's integrated taillight that does not have programmable features for the brake light function, then this will be perfect for you. Let's get on in the bike, start right away. We'll ditch the seats here to gain access to the inside. And we will need to find our tail light connector. Now in this bike, it's really easy. Tail lights right here. The wires come out, go into this loom and they travel down to a connector that is right under the seat lock. Now I won't be able to show you guys exactly what I'm doing here right now, but after this step, I will take the plug out and show you on the outside of the bike. I'm basically removing the connector off the frame and then disconnecting the tail light connector from the harness. Let me grab those guys. All right, so this is the harness connector that sits on the frame. It does have this clipping feature that pushes through a hole and locks it in place. If you compress these two leaflets, that releases it and makes it easier to move this around and spin it around so that you can find the locking mechanism for the actual connector. And then you depress this tab and that unlocks it from this window here and enables you to withdraw it. Now, for this kit, we've provided you with plug and play connections. This is very, very simple. I'm gonna do this externally and then I'm gonna do it in internally. 
This is as simple as it is. Get these connectors seated until they click. Get your brake light modulator seated on the four conductor plug until it clicks. And now this is all connected, ready to go. You have the option of either inserting this connector into the frame or this one. Uh, the remaining connectors can just be left loose. There's not a lot of room to travel for these guys and they won't get snagged on anything there because you typically don't have access there. If you do want to tie them off to something, I recommend zip ties, but that's up to you. Um, the actual body of the brake light modulator, after you've already adjusted it to the mode and speed that you like, I recommend zipping, zip tying it off to a frame component here. I'll show you how that's done in just a moment. Let me undo all this and perform these operations on the inside of the bike. I'm going to opt to put the original connector back in its frame spot and then I'm going to get this guy seated in there. Now you do have a boot here. We have our fender lighting stuff eliminated so there's no wires coming from this boot here through here. But even if there are, there's still enough room in there for you guys to fit this harness in with those wires. So that could be a handy spot for you if you wanna have that kept in there. Now we will plug that in. Before I move forward with actual physical installation, I like to test my modulator and make sure that I'm getting the function. And in fact, I am. We do have two zip ties that come with the kit. And here we have this nifty channel that we've designed into the body of the enclosure that will keep your modulator wherever you zip tie it off to. So I'm just gonna get my zip tie around this frame component and get it engaged. Now this is already assuming that you guys are comfortable with the mode and speed of the operation. If, if not, I would say do not tie it off just yet. You're gonna want to adjust it before you zip it down because once you zip it down, you don't have access to the cap. All right, that'll zip it down here. As you can probably notice, I am facing the grommet down. I do like to face the grommet down just in case there, there's any water that may enter the compartment. It'll just flow down the wires and downstream of any of the electronics that are contained within this unit. It is sealed, but I don't like to ask for trouble. I like to make sure everything's good to go for the term of use of the bike. tricky here all right I'm just gonna get my other zip tie around the wires and get the wires cinched to the frame here and these don't have to be too too tight just enough to limit vibration we cut the excess off and then just make sure we have our wires neatened up in a way that we are comfortable with how they're routed. And I have everything going through the boot and then off out of the way in case you ever need to access the trunk here. Um, you still have the space, no worries there. Let's replace the seats. And that's it, we're done. This is a quick note on the trunk tray here. Typically when these bikes are delivered, they do have a trunk tray that articulates about this axis here. The installation ex is exactly the same with or without. We just typically take these off because we don't see a point in having them there. What you do is just perform the installation the same way I showed, but with this lid open. And as you can see where I've placed my modulator body, it clears everything and is able to get placed back down. No big deal. So for you guys that retain this part, this will be not any different. Just wanted to note that for you. 
for mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from their receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is pulser and this one just keeps on flashing so I like to have it going pretty fast here choice is really up to you if you want to explore the next mode we have the intermittent pulser this one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range makes it the most visible but again freedom means choice the decision is ultimately up to you once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you des decided to keep it, and you're good to go.